A full hour of amazing stories and unbelievable people begins right now. Unbelievable. This massive armored truck tips the scales at over 12,000 pounds. Ginny Kindlespire weighs in at a petite 110 pounds. In just moments, for this unbelievable act, Jenny will attempt to pull this truck from a dead stop 50 feet. But the truly incredible part is how she's doing it. With ropes connected to two large stainless steel hooks pierced through her back. Like, for me, it's kind of a test. I just like to test myself and see what my limits are. At first glance, Jenny, who was born and raised in South Dakota with a house full of brothers, doesn't seem like the extreme piercing type. I definitely relate with being, you know, a female and having feminine qualities. But looks can be deceiving. Inside, Jenny has a will of iron. I know that I can be strong um, when I choose to be. And two years ago, she started body piercing and suspending herself from hooks to prove it. But she's never attempted anything like what she's about to do right now. As Jenny prepares for the big event, her back is prepared for piercing. Spots mark where the hooks will go. Needles are attached for easier penetration. People think that I'm crazy or whatever because I put myself through pain, but I have great people working with me, so I don't feel like I'm putting myself in any danger. Hooked and ready to go, Jenny warms up by softly pulling the ropes. She needs to focus her mind or the pain will become too much. The hooks hurt, but there's a lot more strain on like my spinal cord and the base of my neck. Finally, she's ready. With the crowd cheering on, Jenny goes for it. Straining with all her might, Jenny, with her five foot two inch frame, jerks and heaves. All she needs is to get the armored truck's wheels to turn once, and then she can build momentum. One wrong move, however, and the hooks could rip right through her skin. This is the most dangerous part of the pull. Just when it looks like it may not happen, the truck's wheels suddenly give a tiny roll forward. But with each step, Jenny's skin is stretched to the limit. Will she be able to go the full 50 feet before the agony causes her to collapse? Incredibly, Jenny begins picking up steam. Her goal is in range. She's made it, an amazing feat. But she's not done yet. Caught up in the moment, Jenny powers past 100 feet. Even going beyond where the lights are set up at 200 feet. <laughs> then 300. Finally, after towing the truck more than 500 feet, I'm done. <laughs> Jenny comes to a stop. How do you feel? I feel really good. <laughs> I feel really tired. <laughs> yeah, I beat my goal and went farther <laughs> than I thought I would. <laughs> With hooks pierced through her back, Jenny pulls an armored truck an amazing 584 feet. Incredibly, the hooks never tear through her skin, and the wound should heal within weeks. Using the power of her mind, Jenny Kindlespire pulls off one truly unbelievable act. So very happy to get it over. <laughs> man is about to hurl himself off a 2,000 foot cliff with nothing attached. And to live, he'll have to hit this tiny moving net with pinpoint accuracy. It's a death defying moment. Your heart's gonna race. Everything was going as planned for family man Ivan Schlutz until the day a propeller split open this pilot's skull. See how his strange new dreams are making him a celebrity. Ken Edwards is on a strict diet. He won't even touch a bite of junk food. Instead, 
he survives eating only cockroaches that he crushes with his customized fangs. Boss, before this was a necklace, it was a human being. The dog's so small, they fit in a water glass. And see what's got these ladies taking a two-mile leap in their lingerie. Unbelievable? Believe it. On Ripley's Believe It or Not. This is Ripley's, home of the unconventional. And that leads us right into our first story. For those who think that bungee jumping is boring and parachuting is for wimps, Ripley's has discovered the ultimate thrill. Imagine a jump of more than 90 feet with no cord, no safety rope, and no parachute. Believe it or not, that's exactly what one group of adventurous thrill seekers is doing by taking free falling to a whole new height. Developed in Germany, SCAD diving, which is an acronym for Suspended Catch Air Device, is the latest death-defying recreation in the risky world of extreme sports. The mindset to be into SCAD diving, you've got to be into adrenaline sports. You've got to want to have a bit of a thirst for a buzz, a body buzz. Unbelievably, no safety lines are used here. These thrill seekers wear only boots, pads, and back protection. The only catch is a small net that hangs nearly 100 feet below. It's there to break the fall. However, one wrong move and the diver could snap his neck on the landing, bounce off the side, even miss the net entirely and plummet to their death. As the diver prepares for the jump, they're lifted by crane 160 feet above the concrete. At this point, there is no turning back, and feelings of anxiety and fear begin creeping in. Watch closely, because in a split second, the bottom of this cage will act as a trap door beneath the diver's feet. With a three, two, one count, Five, four, five. the diver is released, <laughs> falling at speeds of over 50 miles an hour. After free falling more than 90 feet, the diver plunges into the safety net which is only 65 oh. feet from the ground. Oh, this <laughs> oh. It's an incredible thrill, but for these SCAD divers, it's not enough. Now they're taking it even further as this diver prepares for the ultimate free fall. Instead of using a crane to hoist him high in the air, he's climbed the face of this 2,000 foot cliff to take a life-threatening leap of faith. In this case, the net is suspended by a helicopter. It is a difficult target as the wind causes the lightweight ropes to sway from side to side. And the rocks pose another hazard. The diver must jump far enough away from the cliff or he risks crashing into it. It's a heart-pounding thrill. With a moment of hesitation and then... Hi. 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 A jump. The diver plummets more than 90 feet, and the landing is a huge success. In this dangerous sport, there is definitely no room for error. When you're all done, and you're in the net, and you realize that you're still alive, there's definitely a moment of exhilaration. Some people scream, some people do nothing. You just stand there. I can't believe I made it. SCAD diving is not yet legal in the United States. Until that changes, you'll have to head overseas for the rush. How would you feel about willing your body to science? Or what about donating an organ for transplant? Okay, well then how about a few finger bones for the sake of art? You've probably heard the expression that beauty is only skin deep. But there are some people out there who think it goes even deeper. They are the proud wearers of a unique and somewhat macabre line of handcrafted jewelry. Believe it or not, 
This exotic jewelry is made from actual human bones. The cadaverous adornments are the creation of jewelry designer Hilda Marshall. She was designing jewelry a few years ago when a medical student gave her a bag of bones. His university was throwing them away because they had gotten separated from their skeletons. I was just so struck by these, these homegrown jewels that I thought they were even more beautiful than the, than the stones and the metals and the other things I work with. Today, this designer gets her raw materials from museums and medical schools that are replacing their old donated human skeletons with more uniform plastic models. Unbelievably, every one of Hilda's unique creations is made from real bodies that were once very much alive. These are metacarpal bones, the hand bones that run through the body of your hand. These smaller ones here are carpal bones, the wrist bones, and then this is a vertebra, a backbone. The post-mortem creations begin by carefully laying out the design of the piece of jewelry, making sure it's symmetrical. Next, a small hole is drilled through the center of each bone. And because they are very porous, like soapstone, she can tell who got milk by how tough they are to drill. Finally, she threads a connecting wire through the bones and puts them together. Creating a piece of jewelry like this elaborate necklace can take her up to a week. And while some may find it hard to believe, bone jewelry is a big seller at various galleries. You can definitely feel something. It's sort of like a sh you have the power over your head and around your neck. But others are not so sure they want to wear human remains. Um, I'm not dying to have them myself. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I think it's kind of attractive. I would never wear human bones if you paid me. It takes someone who's not afraid of the fact that they're only human to wear human bone jewelry. More Ripley's right after this. Wicked motorcycle wipeout claimed this man's arm and leg. Now he's about to climb back on his bike for a ride you have to see to believe. Also, golf's tough enough without stilts. Watch as this giant cuts down the competition. Plus, can these people possibly build a human tower five stories tall? And forget inhalers. These villagers claim that gulping down guppies is the ultimate asthma cure. Sound fishy? It's all ahead on Ripley's. Enter Robert Ripley's archives. Let's go with the show. Robin of Ripley. Leave it or not. <laughs> Leave it or not. The year is 1947. A special ping pong game is set up at the New York City YMCA to demonstrate an experimental cellular rubber. The table and pads are lined with the material and a raw egg replaces the ball. Amazingly, the eggs don't crack unless they hit the floor, of course. Incredibly, a mat made from the cellular rubber even helps these eggs survive a fall out of a fifth-story window. The unique rubber is more cushiony than most due to its microscopic nitrogen-filled cells. Unfortunately, the rubber proves too costly to manufacture for commercial use, and production on this real-life flubber hits the skids. Believe it or not, 